That's odd. They seem to have removed a lot of the trees here along Blue Street East. Anywho, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. It is Monday, January 2nd. The time is 12.55 p.m. And the temperature right now is around 1 degree Celsius. And here alongside Bloor Street East, and there's a look towards the intersection of Young and Bloor. Just giving the camera lens a quick wipe, I saw something on the lens when I flipped the camera around. And this would be the first pre-recorded video I've recorded during the daytime in 2024. So again, Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you all had a great holiday season. As the reality of a long cold winter starts to set in. It's been unseasonably warm so far this year. Or I guess this season. This year is only a day and a half old or so. And this is walking east along the north side of Bloor Street. And for this one, I'll be walking south down Jarvis Street. So I'll walk over to Ted Rogers Way, which becomes Bloor Street shortly after I turn south onto it. And then about two and a half kilometers later, I'll be at Front Street, right by the St. Lawrence Market. But first, we have to travel a few blocks to get to Ted Rogers Way. That's right. We asked the wrong guy for a cigarette. And I did a video in 2021, which seems like forever ago now, where I referred to Jarvis Street as being ugly. And I still maintain of all the major streets downtown. I would think it's the ugliest one, at least in my opinion. But it's also got a lot of neat history and buildings, and I'll be pointing some of that out. This is Church Street here. Not sure why those cars were honking. Well, they're really pushing their luck. And just south of here is the Church Wellesley Village. the old manufacturer's life insurance building, now known as Manulife. And we did get a dusting of snow on New Year's Eve, and you can see some of it. Just 
still remains on the grounds. I guess on the many life grounds, I don't think you use plural if you refer to the word ground. Oh well. It's one of the beauties of these videos. I don't have the luxury of retaking them and editing out my silly mistakes. But this is Ted Rogers' way. And this was previously Jarvis Street, but back in 2009 it was named after Ted Rogers, the mogul behind the Rogers Empire. And their headquarters are located just here on the left. But just south of here, it becomes Jarvis Street. Become a member, commute for less than 10 bucks a month. There used to be bike lanes on Jarvis Street for a very brief, brief period between 2010 and 2012. Back in 2009, City Council voted to improve Jarvis Street. That included widening the sidewalks. And they removed the reversible center lane of traffic, which we'll see a bit later on in this walk. And they added bike lanes. planted more trees and added more heritage plaques in front of the various notable buildings on the street. But in 2012, after Rob Ford took office, they reversed some of those changes, such as they removed the bike lanes and they shifted over to Sherburne Street. Jarvis was seen more as a major artery for vehicle traffic. And there is an on-ramp to the Gardner Expressway at the south end. They also re-implemented the center reversible lane, which we'll see. And that there is where Mount Pleasant Road begins. And you can take that all the way up through Midtown. And that ends just north in the Young and Lawrence neighborhood. And this is Charles Street East. And this is where Jarvis Street now officially begins. Okay. It's amazing what passes off as art these days. There's really an odd mix of buildings along Jarvis Street. It doesn't seem to have any type of cohesive character to it. There's the apartment building, the Massey House, named after the Massey family. And Rogers headquarters over there. And this is Isabella Street coming up. And this neighborhood is known as Upper Jarvis. That's bound by Bloor Street to the north, Wellesley to the south, which is coming up, Jarvis to the east, so this would be the eastern end, and Sherburne to the west. And there is the Casey House across the street. That was, well, that building dates back to 1875 for a large clothing producer at the time. And now it's a facility for those living with HIV and AIDS. 
and it's been expanded quite extensively since then. So this is the east side of downtown, which generally has a grittier feel than the west side. Over a hundred years ago, this was a rather wealthy part of town. There was a lot of prominent building owners in the area and a lot of old mansions, such as the Casey House. Oh, there's a development notice right there to put in a high-rise. We'll be seeing a lot more of that as I go south. But by the earliest, earliest, early 20th century, a lot of the wealthy elites had moved on from this area. Many moved north to the Rosedale neighborhood, which is just north of here. There's the Rundle House. Most of these are heritage properties. And here is the Jarvis Mansion. And that was built in 1891 by George Gooderham of the Gooderham and Wartz Distillery the same family behind the distillery district and the Flatiron building. And recently it was the Berkeley Bicycle Club and now it is the Jarvis Mansion events venue. I'm sure one day it'll be gutted and there'll be a condo tower sticking up out of it. And speaking of notable mansions, across the street is the Keg Mansion. And that dates back to 1867. And at one point, that served as the University of Toronto facility. Now it's kind of the flagship restaurant for the Keg Steakhouse. It's really kind of a neat experience eating there. Rumors are that it's haunted. I don't buy into that sort of nonsense, but if you do, you might enjoy it. And this would be Wellesley Street coming up. So this is the south end of the Upper Jarvis neighborhood. And you'll notice, I mentioned this earlier, but the center lane here is reversible. It's got that red X, which means northbound traffic needs to use the right two lanes. And you'll notice the center lane has two solid yellow, I guess they're not solid, but two yellow stripes. And I think at 3.45 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., that lane will be reversed and cater to northbound moving traffic. At least during weekdays.
There's the Jarvis Collegiate Institute across the street. I think that's the oldest school property in the city. There's a plaque in front of it that tells you how old it is, but you'll just have to take my word for it. That's the Jarvis Court Apartments on the right. That's Maitland Street. Some more of those older mansions along Jarvis. These ones here are the Wellsboro mansions dating back to 1912. That was built after the heyday of Jarvis Street. On the right is the Betty Oliphant Theater. And this main building dates back to 1863 and that's home of Canada's National Ballet School. That's built around a heritage property. I had a friend who used to live in that building there, 437 Jarvis Street. It's a very long, narrow apartment building. And this building on the right, I believe, used to house Havergal College, a rather prestigious all-girls high school. It's the girls equivalent of Upper Canada College. It's located now in a very nice looking building at Avenue and Lawrence. I think now it's an extension of the ballet school. Guy has a mouthful of peanuts. <laughs> Thinks I'm following him. Well, it looks like the sidewalk 
is interrupted here at Carlton Street. And if I cross the street, we'll get a better view of a mural coming up. That is the Allen Garden straight ahead. That's known for having a conservatory with six different buildings featuring botanical gardens. Although sadly, these days it's known for having a very large encampment. There's the side of the old Primrose Hotel. And that mural has been there for over five years now. That's now a student residence for the school formerly known as Ryerson Students. Sure, there's a number of students trying to study and get stuff done. Just listening to the sounds of this condo going up. And there's a major Toronto landmark coming up. A fast food restaurant. To be more specific, Harvey's. Back in the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s, and I guess even early 2000s, this area took on a very different complexion at night. It had a reputation for street workers, and this Harvey's in particular was given the nickname Hooker Harvey's. And fun fact, if you go into Google Maps and type in Hooker Harvey's, it'll take you to this location. And there's a couple of old mansions right next to it that are boarded up. Let's cross the street again. I don't think I've ever actually been to this Harvey's. That's a Canadian hamburger fast food joint. That's actually pretty good. And we're at Gerard Street. There's the Econo Lodge. That was used as a homeless shelter during the pandemic. I don't know if it's been returned to the hotel operators. I remember looking that up on TripAdvisor and it was a solid three-star hotel. Over there is where the old Grand Hotel used to be. That was later occupied by the RCMP. And now there's a 50-story condo and hotel development going up. Notice there's no longer a reversible center lane here. We hate artist Bill Reed once occupied that building on the right.
So Jarvis Street takes its name from William Jarvis, a provincial secretary and register of records from 1792 to 1817. And land in this area was granted to him after his appointment as the provincial secretary. Here's the Ontario Court of Justice. Although there's been a lot of controversy regarding Henry Dundas and the name Dundas Street and Dundas Square. I think it's kind of odd that an abolitionist has been at the center of such controversy, whereas William Jarvis and the Jarvis family were actually known slave owners who fought to prolong slavery. I think it was John Graves Simcoe who was motioning to end it, and William Jarvis fought hard to keep it. And there is what looks like a government building, but that it's actually occupied by Sears Canada at one time. It's kind of an ugly shaped pyramid building that dates back to 1971. And it's connected to, the, or it was connected to the merchandise building, which is behind it. A big old warehouse that's been converted into lots. There's the merchandise building. When I call Jarvis Street ugly, this is kind of what I mean. It's just really random. It's kind of surprising this parking lot has held out so long. Right on the corner of Dundas and Jarvis. Condos have sprung up on the other three corners. You'd be hard pressed to find an intersection that's changed in recent years more than this one. proposing a 14-story tower for that site. It's a bit surprising. But this is Dundas Street East. To the right, that'll lead you towards Dundas Square and Young and Dundas. signage on that Tim Hortons is kind of underwhelming for such a prominent location. It's one of the problems I find with newer developments. The retail presence is always kind of underwhelming compared to the older buildings. This is a big construction site.
Look at the balconies on this building. Let's see if I can zoom in. These are quite unique. They're rather long and narrow. And I mentioned William Jarvis was the original or was who the name was, the street was named after. His estate was right here on the right. And that is appropriately named Hazelburn Co-op. And his estate used to feature hazelnut trees in front of it. And it was often referred to as Hazelburn. And this is Shooter Street coming up. And there is the Moss Park Armory. That opened back in 1965, and that houses several reserve units. The Canadian military. And during a deep freeze several years ago, it served as a homeless shelter. It's on the west end of the Moss Park neighborhood. Okay, you got it. Like Look at all the pigeons. That's a Fred Victor location. That's a outreach center. Helping people find place and purpose. As I cross Queen Street East. I've always found this lot to be kind of curious with all the redevelopment going on in the city. Kind of surprising that this remains. It's the Lawrence Love Hotel. And things start to gentrify in a hurry as I go south here. As we enter the St. Lawrence neighborhood. That is Richmond Street.
It's one of those electric FedEx vehicles. You see more and more of those lately. And this is Adelaide Street coming up. Maybe I'll cross over. It'll be more interesting to walk on the east side alongside St. James Park over there. There's a neat view. CN Tower. Oh, my gimbal just recentered itself. So. In the middle of the financial district there. There's a year-round Christmas store coming up just on the left. And this would be King Street East on the southwest corner there is the St. Lawrence Hall that was built in 1850 for public gatherings, concerts, and exhibitions. And it used to seat or feature a 1,000 seat amphitheater. I went through there during a Doors Open Toronto. market is nearing completion. I think that will be ready later this year. There's the Flatirons Christmas Market. That store has been around since 1986. market itself so we've made it to Front Street south of Front Jarvis becomes Lower Jarvis and that continues down all the way to the lake pretty much at Queens Key East I might get myself some lunch here though. There's an I'm Perfect Fresh Eats.
Do I eat super healthy or do I go for Popeyes? Either way, that will be a tough decision coming up for me. The hardest one I faced in 2024 so far. Let's see, what deal do they have on Tuesdays? I guess they got to compete with KFC. Anywho, we are at George and Front Street, and I think we're going to wrap this one up. So I hope you enjoyed this walk south down Jarvis Street, starting at or near Young and Bloor, making my way over to Ted Rogers, and then south down through Jarvis all the way to where it ends at Front Street and becomes Lower Jarvis. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Click that button and hit the bell. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. I see a subway. I think that is actually calling my name. Anywho, hope you all had a good New Year's. We gotta go inside and get some food. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Stay warm, stay safe, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.